So we've got these sidewalk lanterns throughout our yard, but I wanted to see if I could print something a little nicer looking instead of this. And here it is. 3D printed with its own solar cell on top. I'll show you how I made that on today's Film of Friday. So I found this lantern builder set by Thingiverse user Sember and it had a lot of different designs including this one with a flat top but when I went to the files it wasn't available so I had to take the pointed top one and modify it in Tinkercad. I needed to put a hole in the top for the light and for the solar cell so first I imported the file that was pointed. I just went to import, chose the file and imported it into Tinkercad and then I went to work and it didn't take much. I put a block on top to cut it off flat and then I did a diameter, a cylinder, the diameter of the lighting element. But then I left a gap between them and it's easier to see if I reverse the solids to clear and you can see the the gap just between the cylinder and the block. That's the lip that I'm actually going to glue to. So let's reverse all these back, just undo and we're back to where I started. This is the finished product. So I sent this off to Simplify 3D by downloading the STL file, and I'll show you that next. I loaded the base and the top into Simplify 3D with the profile for the Flashforge Dreamer. I printed at a 0.2 layer height, a 30% fill, and I made sure I was using right extruder on this because the right extruder had the ABS filament. And then I used a skirt brim setup that Simplify 3D suggested to me, and here's the settings, two layer heights, zero offset, and eight skirt outlines. And then I did 230 degrees for the extruder temperature, and this guy was ready to be sliced. After slicing, Simplify 3D said it would take three hours and 33 minutes and 18 meters of plastic. So the next step was to load in the lens design. And I loaded in one, and then I just went to the Edit Duplicate menu and made three more copies and then I centered and arranged them and they all fit. Now this is on the platform for the maker front. So this is the maker front settings. I did a layer height of 0.2 for the lenses. I did an infill 30 percent. Uh, no supports and the temperature is shown here 220 degrees. So I sliced this and it said only 30 minutes to print these guys. For the lens material I used this ABS transparent that I got from Bumat and for the ABS frame of the printer I just used the black ABS that came with the Flashforge Dreamer. So now it's time for a time lapse. What did you think I was going to show you? Some boring 3D printers? This is what I do when I'm killing time. I cut the grass. It's time lapse! Here's all the pieces fully printed. The lens and the stake were printed on the maker front and then the base and the top were printed on the Flashforge Dreamer and they both did a great job and it's nice having two printers to do this definitely. So here's the stake. I didn't show the details on this. It was just printed upside down like this on the maker front and 50% fill, 0.3 layer height and but it came to a nice point. It did a good job on that. Now it's got three locator pins and this is the base that was printed on the Dreamer and it's got three locators and a hole so the stake just goes in and then you twist it and that's what holds it. It works really well. From there there's these arms that come up from the base and they've got a groove in them to accept the lenses. Now the lenses came out nice and flat no warping but one side's rough one side's really smooth. The, the one that was down on the glass bed is very smooth and they fit nicely. They slide right in. On the bo bottom they're tight and the top they're loose but the top's got to get pulled in by the snap. There's a, a notch in the top of these arms that fit into a hole with a little bump in the lid. And that's what holds this whole thing together when this snaps on. And then the light mechanism, I designed that hole for it to fit and it fit perfectly. It worked out really good. This one's glued in place but here's one that isn't so this is the opening and then the, the light mechanism just almost fits perfectly flush to the top of it. And all I did was use 
a little Loctite super glue, professional liquid. Put a bead just on the inside of this, pressed and held it for like 30 seconds, and then let it set for an hour to dry. And it came out really good. So now I just need to assemble this, and we're ready to go. The first thing I do is I slide in the lenses. And this worked really well. I can't believe how good these things fit in these grooves. It's it's really, really nice. And then the hardest part is putting the lid on. You line up a couple of these holes, and now what I'm doing, I'm actually squishing the, the lenses a little bit. They're flexing. But I have to do that in order to get it to snap on all four corners. And there's the finished unit. Now I just add the stake, and I got my finished light. So after you finish a project like this, and it works out really good, the next logical step is to what? Print 20 more? <laughs> no. You go big. I upsized it to 200%, and I left the pointed top and put four of those light sensors in. And then I want to make an adapter so I can put it on a pole. Anyway, I'll save this for a future Filament Friday. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching and you want to see more. And if you want to help support practical prints like this, a dollar a month to my Patreon account. There's a link up here somewhere. It goes a long way. So that's it. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.